Powerful. Let your spirit never forget it. It's called the price of waiting. Say after me the price of waiting. The price of waiting for the appointed time. Hmm. The price of waiting for the appointed time. Constraining yourself to wait for the season when the archives of your life synchronizes with the prophetic timing in the realm of the spirit. At that time, certain portals are open. Many times, Satan pushes people. Get up. He says, look at you. Get up. Do some things. He told Jesus, it wasn't time for his manifestation yet. And Satan said, perform a miracle for me. Turn this stone into bread. And Jesus said, although I have the power, shame on you, Satan. I don't need to prove any point. God has already said he is the son of God. Satan is saying, prove it by performing a miracle. There are many of you that Satan will say, prove that you are actually called by going to do something. And you move against the prophetic timing for your life. And see that although you are anointed, the heavens are shot over you. And you wonder why. There's no turning back again. Jehovah has done it all. First Samuel chapter 16. It is done. It is done. It is finished. Look, there's nothing as beautiful as seeing a man ride gloriously into the prophetic timing for his life. He becomes an inferno of fire. Nothing will stop you. When the season comes, I tell you, no religious person can stop you. First Samuel, chapter 16. There's no turning back again. Jehovah has done it all. There's no turning back. Jehovah has done it all. A great man in the Bible called David. He was such a powerful man. When Saul disobeyed and the spirit of the Lord lifted from Saul. In chapter 16. Prophet Samuel was told. He said, how long shall you weep over Saul? Seeing that I have rejected him as king. He said, but get up. Take the oil and go to the house of Jesse and there anoint a man that I have put as king. And Samuel said, if David hears, if, if Saul hears this, he will kill me. And he got up and carried. Let's read on. 16 verse 12. And when Samuel saw Eliab, and look, he said, surely this is the Lord's anointed. And the Lord told him, no, don't try it. Don't try it. I do not look at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. And after he paraded seven of his sons, Shama and every one of them, he said, is this all? And he said, there is one in the wilderness. And he said, go and bring him. There's no turning back again. Jehovah has done it all. And he carried the boy. He came dirty but called. Dirty but called. Dirty but destined. Ugly but destined. Smelling sheep but still destined. Many of you think it's because of your present state. No. If you are called, you are called. And the anointing will come upon you. Whether people like you or not, it will come. Has nothing to do with your background. Let's read on. Let's hurry up, please. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 12. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and of a beautiful countenance and handsome. And the Lord said, Arise! anoint for this is he the king and the bible says and then samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren read what happened after everybody want to read and the spirit of the lord came upon david from that day onward so De so samuel arose and what happened to david the spirit of the lord came upon him is that correct go to 17 verse 15 17 verse 15. Are you there? 17 verse 15. Everybody read. One to read. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Look up. I thought he was just anointed. 
And they told him, they said, look, this anointing has come upon you. You are king. But the Bible says when he received it, he said, okay, I know one last point and Satan will not cheat me. Although I already know. Every time he looked at Saul, he knew that that was his throne. But he went back. The Bible says he went back and kept tending the sheep. Many people from there, they will proceed straight to Paul's, Saul's palace and say, Saul, I've got good news for you. If you ever think you're anointed, sorry for you. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. This is the new wine skin and the wine has come. Out of my throne, I claim it in Jesus' name. But there is something called the fullness of time. Say after me, the fullness of time. This is the dimension that has cheated many people from entering depths in the spirit. And every time the anointing comes, Satan begins to pinch you. He begins to tell you, go, go, why are you waiting? The Bible says, lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the books. It has been written. I'm part of what God is somebody that is meticulous with timings. In the fifth year of the sixth month of the seventh day of the reign of so-so-so -so king, timing is important in the spirit. When you look at a mango tree, kerosene mango with great potentials how many of you have, have tried plugging mango when it's not done it comes with a lot of struggle and when you plug it to eat it it can trouble your stomach something that is supposed to have great potentials the difference is you did not wait for the timing but when the season of harvest comes all you need to do is stand close to the tree and shake it small and mangoes begin to fall and when you carry it is so beautiful you see the beauty stay in the incubating room of the spirit until the time appointed this is a word from the lord this is powerful Compared to where I'm going, I am still on training. We always discuss it and say it. Let me tell you, that's why I know the jurisdiction that God has given me. Nobody will look at me and say, ah, why don't you launch into certain realms? Don't cheat me. I know where God is taking me and I will stay. I may feel anointed to you, but you don't know where God is taking me. Compared to where he's taking me, friends, I'm only starting. And no poster will cheat me. No invitation will cheat me. I will remain and stay. If upon, he said, I will stand upon my watch and I will share. Hallelujah. The price of constraining yourself until the set time comes. I believe that God is delivering some of us right now who believe that immediately after this conference, you just go and plant a church next week. It's not ambition. You are truly called, but stay. You are truly called, but stay. You may be anointed. The Bible talks about a man called Stephen in scripture. He was called among the seven who were ordained to serve tables. But there was an extraordinary manifestation of the spirit in his life. The Bible never records that he stopped serving table. There are some of you that may be cleaners in this church. But everybody knows that it's a matter of time. The fire in your life is not for tables. Still remain there. Keep cleaning the tables. People will look at you and say, do you know if you become a pastor in another church, do you know the kind of lifting that the level of your anointing should command? Let me tell you, it's not a man that chooses men. It's God. And when the finger points at you, my brother, the door will be open. You must have a track record. David went back. And from there he was called. And he became, before then, he became the armor bearer of Saul. Played the harp. Although he had known that Saul, the spirit had gone. He knew that this guy is just playing. Why didn't he go and share with his partners and say, guys, do you know something that happened to me? Don't tell anybody. This guy's spirit is already upon me. You just start, wait and see. So, are you ready to be one of uh, Otumba when it happens? better start cooperating and complying with me. He kept quiet. He contemplated these things in the secret place and remained. But when the season came, there is always a time. The moment Goliath came, what seemed like a challenge, God said, son, the time is now. Come out of that wilderness. And God used a situation to set him up. And the father said, go and feed your brothers. And he went and he had a beast roaring and insulting God's people. And God told him, that's the time. Son, this is it. Show the world 
what you are made of. It's time to shine. It's time to arise. People can call it pride, but arise and shine. Your time is here. And David says, Saul, so, I can take this man. Oh, teenagers, teenagers are your juvenile delinquents. He said, I can take this man. And when he stood, Goliath said, am I a dog that you come to me with? He said, he looked at Goliath. He said, Goliath, don't be foolish. Don't take my being shabby for granted. Don't think big. I've just been waiting for timing. I didn't start today. I've killed animals and killed beasts years ago. I've just been waiting for divine timing. So that you see me humbly serving you does not mean I'm as weak as I look. I'm just waiting for God's timing. There is nothing as powerful as a general under control. There is nothing more beautiful. People can pretend not to recognize you're a general, but you cannot hide the anointing. Not for too long. There's no going back. Jehovah has done it all. Go ahead and pray and say, Lord, I wait. There's no going back. Jehovah has done it all. Oh, Lord, we wait. We move in accordance to your pace. We refuse to let anything move us. We move at your pace. And Lord, when the time comes, let no fear keep us. Grant us the audacity to launch out. Let no religion keep us. We will wait. But when the timing comes, show the world it is the time. Show the world it is the time. Let every factor couple itself together. Friends, I speak to you. You are a general in the making. You may be sitting there just fixing wires. You will not end up fixing wires. God is taking you somewhere. He's taking you somewhere. That prophecy over your life is not dead yet. The oil is already upon you. It will not come. It's there. But wait. The season will come. It's called the fullness of time. Some years ago, I used to stay somewhere very quietly in the night. Day and night I remained there. And I saw many of my colleagues and contemporaries, they liked ministry. You see one, you, you know, all these campus things. You so have a friend, you see him holding briefcase and one PA here and one this year and one this year, one lady here and you see people just moving. We are doing ministry. I knew they would not last. It wasn't a cause. There is nothing as ugly as stepping out when you sent yourself. People claim they are this and that. When you are sent, somebody must have sent you. The person who sent you is the one who will defend you when you stand before Pharaoh. Moses said, God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent me. Hallelujah. And so we have to wait for our timings. And even when you begin to manifest, you must move at the pace of God. Many people think when the door of ministry opens, then you just start moving. There are many people, pastor, who have met me and said, why don't you think, don't you think it's time for you to have uh, a, start doing uh, a, a television? When we had crusade in 2007 in Panshin, can you remember? When we had the crusade, uh, the, the church there called me and said, we have created a place for you. Come and open here and idea. And when I reasoned, God told me, don't die for nothing. You are not prepared. There are levels that I'm working in now that if I had walked in years ago, as anointed as I think I was, I would have died. There are certain character preparations that needed to go on to handle the level of glory. I would have made a mess of it today. But for the training of the spirit. There are many people that what God is training you in now is no longer anointing, it's character. You already have the anointing, but the character to sustain that level, you are not here. When God begins to bring pretty ladies for you for counseling, and some of them will come nude. Brother, you must know what you are standing on, otherwise you will not last. That's why God says, stay. He said, God, boy, I can counsel now. I can't can I counsel. And God says, did you just pray and tell me that loss is disturbing you and we just settle this issue, me and you? And now... You want to enter a place where there are all kinds of pretty ladies and you want to bring the counsel of God. And these are ladies that anything you tell them, they'll say, yes, pastor. Huh. 
stories let us stay in the secret place until the fullness of time no man determines that fullness of time when god see when you carry over in school you can make it up when you carry over god's cause you will come back even if it's after 50 years that cause you did not participate in you will see the deficiency obviously in ministry that's why you see some people though anointed they jump up some classes in the spirit because they were running and later you find out that they have to go back and buy tapes and sit down and take that course and pass it stay in the class of the spirit i choose to stay jesus stayed for 30 years and used three years to shake the world 30 years 30 years and in three years he shook the world if you give me an axe to cut a tree in eight days i will use seven days sharpening the knife and on the eighth day i will hit that tree once and it will fall many of us will start cutting the tree from the first day and at the end both the axe and the tree you will lose everything are you getting blessed tonight mm. this is a message you buy the tape and hear again again and again 